So you might notice we're doing something a little different today. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, we got you on your better, better side. side up, yeah, yeah. We, we worked that out. That's right. So um, miracles, part of our Unsolved Mysteries series, and miracles certainly fit the bill. Uh, fit the bill in terms of miracles, as we talked about last week, as things that you can only see the effect of them. You really can't see them when they're happening. You can't see the form of them. You don't really know how that's happening, but you can see the effect, just like you can see the effect of the spirit uh, when it moves through. So it certainly fits the bill. So you heard two stories today. Uh, one was the story of the beginning of MCC, the story of Troy Perry and how MCC began. And then we also heard from scripture the story about Jesus feeding the 5,000 people uh, with very, very, very little food. And so uh, we're here to talk about these miracles today. Um, we're going to ask uh, the congregation, if you would, to just eavesdrop on our conversation today. So just let yourself be right here with us and be part of listening and overhearing our conversation about these miracles today. Um, so let's talk first about uh, the original miracle that created MCC. Mm -hmm. So the short version recap of the story that you heard a little bit about today is that Troy Perry um, uh, came to this place where he was really distraught and largely over his sexuality and he cut both of his wrists and tried to commit suicide uh, and as he was recovering uh, in the hospital from the suicide attempt. Um, he tells the story, as we heard a little bit there, that he um, heard God say to him, um, I love you, I love my gay and lesbian children, and so Troy, you should go and tell them that. And so uh, a, an amazing thing. And then he got up off his sick bed there, his suicide bed, and ran an ad in the Advocate newspaper uh, that there was going to be a worship service um, and that homosexuals were welcome. And uh, so that began MCC, that miracle in his home that day. So I guess here's my question for you. Um, when do you think this MCC miracle happened? Did it happen when Troy heard God say, I love you and I love all of my children. There are no stepsons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And you need to go tell him that. So was it that? Was the miracle that he actually did it? I mean, that's pretty amazing. Or was the miracle that a church like MCC actually survived and thrived? Where is the miracle? Which do you think it is? There's a part of me that wants to say, is there a D? All of the above. Because <laughs> I think yeah. each of them, yeah. in their own way, was a miracle. The miracle that... Troy heard a voice, he calls it that still small voice in his mind's ear, he refers it to that. Yeah, in his of, mind's ear. In his it's mind's ear, right, you know, which is kind of kind of interesting. And didn't say, oh my, you know, like, whoa, I'm hearing voices. Right, right. right? That he was able to listen, and it had such a change, such a change on him, right? right? He went from this, this person who was feeling beaten up, downtrodden, wanted to take his own life, it was that bad, right. just to hearing this voice. And saying, and listening to it, I just I, I, that, that to me is amazing, and I think a miracle. Yeah. You know, uh, you've heard me talk about. It. To me, miracles are all about faith. Mm -hmm. That really is, you know, if I were to reframe it, a miracle is faith. Yeah, faith, true. faith is a miracle. True. Because and, because you're investing in something that you can't see or touch. Yeah. I mean, that's the mystery of it for yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. And then the fact that he listened to what God told him to do, which was pretty rapid, 1968, this is before Stonewall, you know, people are getting, you know, he, you hear the stories, I know that, I know people who lived through the, you know, you're out someplace, the cops come in, they beat the lid, but it's not out of you, you know, <laughs> I cleaned it up. Um, <laughs> uh, well, those who know me, um, you know, that, that he was, that he, that he was willing to do that at a time when culture said, you don't go yeah, do this, because do it, there's not going to be a good outcome for you personally. Yeah, that's and right. And then the fact that MCC, I mean, if you're 50 years old, right? 
Right. I mean, and that's a miracle in of itself, really. I mean, there's no reason to think that when this happened in 1968, that there should have been any chance that a church like this could survive. I mean, to me, that's that may be the ultimate miracle here. Is that there was just no one would have gone and placed a bet on that. You know, no one would have gone to Biloxi and paid, placed a bet on that. That's true. But yeah, I mean, so think. Of, I mean, but think about that, Lily. Right? I, I agree with you. Yeah. Is Here's a church, somebody who's willing, Troy was willing to stand up and say, there are, he says it, there are no stepchildren. And he right. heard God say that to him, mm -hmm. that we are all God's sons and daughters, right? right? And, and that, I mean, talk about radical. Yeah. Right? And, that, and that he was willing to do that, and he had 12 people, I think it was, right? Yeah. You know, in the first worship service, and it sounds like it was a pretty diverse and motley crew, mm -hmm. yeah, right? It was, yeah, it was. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that we're still here. And That's we're right. not just still here, we're in 30-something uh, countries. 37 countries around the world. I mean, <laughs> what were the chances? You know, yeah. I mean, that, that's just unbelievable. Yeah, and I, I also just think it might be important for us all to take personal note that there are probably times when most of us have heard God speak to us mm -hmm. in some way. And it might have been something we saw, and that was a spoken something, or something we actually heard. But most of us dismiss it. Yeah. And that's, that's the difference in the faith part, where mm. we actually kind of go, hmm, I probably ought to pay attention to that. And so, you know, Troy did that. You know, another thing that comes up for me in this story, uh, in terms of uh, uh, thinking about miracles, is, um, is MCC do another miracle? I mean, are we at a place where we should be expecting another miracle? You're going to be up for election for moderator of our worldwide movement. And um, I'm guessing this is a question you have pondered. Oh, yeah. I hope it is a question you have pondered. <laughs> I have pondered it a great <laughs> way. So do you think we need a miracle yeah. right now? Yes, I do. And I think we are poised and going to live into a miracle. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our history, right, we had the history I think we've had two significant, I mean, there have been other miracles, but two really significant uh, miracles in the 50 years of MCC, right? First was Troy founding MCC again, right? right? Yep. 1968, you know, he's the, he slid his wrist. I mean, all these things, and he heard this voice, and he took that step of faith. And then the second thing that really sticks out to me is the whole HIV AIDS crisis right, yes. of the 80s. Mm -hmm. We lost an entire generation of men. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it was a time, if you kind of think back, and I, you know, I was youngish. Well, that, that right, generation of 80s, men right? would be our age, age today. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you and I have both served in the denominational leadership. Mm -hmm. um, of MCC, and so I know during that time, and still, um, a lot of women came into leadership positions, and largely because we lost a generation of men who would have been our age and would have been our MCC leaders. So, so yeah, it, it is an interesting time yeah, for us in it, the 80s. Yeah, and I, it, the other piece of that that may be a miracle, right, mm -hmm. is if you think about kind of where we had been and, and People may disagree with me, but I think we were polarized at gay men and lesbian yes. women, yes. right? That's right. And, and it was that culturally that may be where we were and that what happened is women stepped in and we, when I, I it's interesting because somebody actually commented to me the other day about this, a guy, is that how we women were there and it was, I think, a pivotal key turning point in relationships. Yes, it um, was. For yeah. us, right? Absolutely, because, um, and it isn't so much about, you know, women stepped in to save the day. Mm -hmm. It was just about, there was such a great need that yep. everybody um, came together, and women and men, all of a sudden that was less important. And mm -hmm. all the issues we thought were so important weren't anymore because life and death were there. Exactly. You know, and it, it did, and here's the other miracle about it, was not just the way relationships were restored, but 
we grew. MCC grew all the while we were losing a generation of young men. Uh, I don't know how you do the math on that. It's God math. It is God math. I mean, it was a miracle moment um, in our history. So I think you're, you're right about that. So are we teed up for another one? I think, I, think, I believe we are. Because I have to tell you, you know, I, for me personally, the fact that I have even stepped out to do this is a miracle. Well, there this, is that. All right. So, there is so. that. <laughs> Some people this. might say crazy, but I think it's a yeah. miracle. Yeah. It's all how we frame it. Right? So let's, <laughs> I'm going to reframe it as a, as, yeah. as a miracle. Is that, you know, first off, that there's a lay person. Right. right? So, yep. so just, just from that, I mean, this is, you know, and I know you've heard the story, but, but you know, this is not something I was looking to go do. I'm very comfortable doing what I've been doing for the last umpteen years of my life. Uh, but there was that, you know, I don't want to liken myself to Troy, but there was a still small voice mm -hmm. that just kept yep. walking away. And thank God for my wife. I mean, Charlene's been with me through this entire journey. Right. Um, and it's because I believe God's called us at NCC to this pivotal point and that we, we are just babes in the wood 50 <laughs> years old and that there is so much, and I believe, that God, you know, looking at the world today, is ready and poised for MCC to again be that miracle for others. Right. There's so much hate, distrust, and stuff. And one of the beautiful things about MCC is we say, come as you are, right. believing as you do, because we are each of God's perfect that's children. Right. Yep, yep. It, that, that's totally a miracle. And <laughs> I think it's important to say that uh, Charlene is a miracle. Uh, your I wife. Agree. <laughs> because uh, here's the thing: uh, she did not sign up with you 30 years ago, oh, no, thinking no. that you were going to be a denominational uh, spiritual leader. No. Uh, so I can't even imagine what some of those conversations must have been. But I do sort of see that the miracle of that moment. I can see the miracle of a lay person. I can see the uh, even being in the running. I can, mm -hmm. I can see the miracle of even some of our discord is that, that there's an opportunity for spirit to, to come into this okay. place and to that crack. You know, sometimes we need to be broken, right? Mm -hmm. In order for spirit to, you know, nuzzle her way in uh, yeah. to us. And so, uh, interesting moment, I think, where if if we can be ready, there may be a miracle yeah. for us. I, I'm, that, that reminds me already. Uh, I think I may, have, I may have shared it with some of the folks here at Trinity in the past. I think That's OK. Uh, it's my experience they need to hear it at okay. least twice. OK, OK, OK. But it's this whole, <laughs> this whole idea of the kintsugi, the art, the Japan, that ancient Japanese right, yep. art form, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about being broken. Open, right. where, mm -hmm. where a vase or something is just broken into pieces. And most of us would take it, you know, if you're like me, you'd get your dustpan and brush and you'd toss it out. It and that's not what they do, is they take it, they glue it back together again using gold, right? And what it does is it creates something so much more beautiful. Um, and, and I think that's, that, maybe that's the best example, I think, of where we are at yep. MCC yep. is we really, you know, if nothing we've been cracked open the last couple of years is that God's ready through spirit to help us be joined back together with that gold into something more beautiful and more, more everlasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that metaphor. I think it's just a beautiful one for us. So we also hear a story in scripture today about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And uh, uh, in the reading, you heard that um, it's coming toward the end of the day. And Jesus has obviously been speaking to the crowd. And the disciples come and say, hey, it's getting toward the end of the day. These people have been here. We probably need to send them on their way so they can get some place to sleep and get some food. And, uh, and Jesus says, well, let's just feed them here. And the disciple says, well, that's fine if you want us to go buy some food. But otherwise, all we have, you know, is just these uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. And uh, so Jesus says, now go and put everybody into groups of 50 and have them sit down. And uh, after that was done, he took 
the five loaves and two fish, and he held them up and blessed them. And then there was more than enough to go around. Now, I think that qualifies as a miracle. Um, well, so what's your, what's your take on this, this moment about this little bit of food that was able to feed everybody? Yeah. Now, so when I think about that, what comes to my mind is, you know, so we had five loaves. So somebody was probably sitting there with, you know, a loaf for themselves and stuff. And the miracle there, to my way of thinking, is that instead of having a scarcity mentality, it was about abundance, mm. about giving of yourself and giving what you have. And when you do that, there's more than enough. There was way more than enough based right. on, you know, the, the, them talking about that was a 12 baskets and stuff afterwards. So that's amazing. Right, yeah, I mean, it really is. And so I think it's why more and more theologians um, are starting to talk to us about this story in a different way. And, and I know, you know we've discussed this before, that um, it may be that the miracle is less about a hocus pocus Jesus that just you know, made them all you know, multiply. And, and, and a lot more about a Jesus who anticipated that there was enough. And that as people were broken into groups of 50, that everybody realized that we don't, we don't have enough food. And so they started to give all the food they brought. And in, when everybody gave everything they had, there was enough. Yep. When, let's think about it. When everybody gave everything they had, there was enough for everyone. And then there was some left over. Wow. And so instead of, I'm going to be stingy with my bread mm -hmm. and my fish, I'm actually going to give it, and then there will be more than enough for us all. And it, that feels to me like a more precious miracle. I agree. You know, it just it's because it teaches us that the miracle is also sometimes in us. Mm -hmm. You know, is right there with us. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. I don't think we we I think sometimes we just we lose fact. You know, and we do. You call it the hocus pocus. Maybe I think it's the, you know. I'll let somebody else worry about it, right? And is that willingness to be able to give of ourselves and not depend on somebody else to go do it for me. Right. And right. I think that, you know, and there's, you know, Troy could have waited for somebody else, maybe, yeah. or he probably would have been dead, but, but you know, seriously, <laughs> right. is, is that we are able to give of what we have, and what we have is enough, that God has provided Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's what, that's yeah, where it is. Right. If we can do that, um, you know, I think sometimes we forget so much about how much we are given, and we just want to hold on yeah, to it, like yeah. like the little kid in the in the sandbox yeah. that doesn't want to play. On it. You know, you can't have my toy. Right, right. right. Well, I love I love this Jesus here too, who um, who because he had a lot of notoriety at the moment, mm -hmm. and that the 5,000 people wanted to come and hear him talk all day. <clears throat> and, um, and so you, you could imagine a Jesus who might let his ego get away with him a little bit and, and sort of um, let the disciples hold on to that, those five loaves and two fishes mm -hmm. for him because, you know, he needed to be fed after teaching all day. I mean, that, but this is a Jesus who said, no, th this is the food that we have right here. And we're going to offer it. We're going to bless it. We're going to give it. And then in the doing of that, in the setting of the example, um, I, just love, I just love that that was, that's the Jesus. That's the Jesus moment where he showed us how to do it. And it sounds like to me the people who were there did it. And, and then there was something on the other side that was quite miraculous that, um, that happened. So um, I guess I'm hoping. Mm -hmm in a couple of weeks when we go to conference, that there will be a miracle on the other side of it. That the miracle may happen that week in ways that we won't see or know exactly, but the effect, which is the part of the miracle we can see, uh, will be on, on the other side. And I'm, I'm hoping for it, starting to pray for it a lot more, uh, starting to put my energy in that direction, uh, which I hope we all will, because, you know, God didn't bring us 50 years into this just to leave us somewhere uh, without some fish and bread <laughs> to eat. So 
Um, so I'm looking forward to that. You know, I think there was another miracle that happened on the day that Troy um, had the first worship service in his home. Because uh, there were 12 people there, and you mentioned this earlier, they were a motley crew. I mean, there were like, uh, there were lesbians, gay men, there was a drag queen, there were two Jewish people, there were some straight folks. I mean, there was just a, what? I mean, a, a motley crew in his home. Um, and the story that Troy has written, you know, says that they, they sang and they prayed and he preached a sermon. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one of my favorite things is that, <laughs> that he played an album of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> <laughs> so he had big things in mind, even, uh, even early on, you know. So, um, and, and they also took communion. And in the story, it says that he used his coffee table. Yeah. He used his coffee table to set, set up communion, and he had to borrow um, uh, communion trays from a, another church. He had to borrow a robe to mm -hmm. wear from a, another clergy person uh, from another denomination. So, um, you know, it was just a, an interesting mis -ma mix match of stuff. And, um, but what happened in the miracle was that on the coffee table, and the elements were there, Troy invited every person to come to communion with no requirement. That's, it, you know, I, um, I'll, I'll tattle on myself. So, you know, as you know, I was, I'm a recovering Catholic. Um, if you live long enough, it's bound to happen. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in recovery for being, I haven't been raised Catholic. No, but, but that, and that's it. I mean, that is just so, such a moment. And it's a moment that continues every time. Yeah. I mean, that it, there are very few things, right, in MCC that we kind of have to do, I'll, I'll say, and have to is, is not the, we want to do. Right. Every yeah. time we're gathered. But we is, wouldn't is, stray from that. No, right. is that, we yeah. won't stray from that. Right. We won't stray from that, because that, the miracle there, the moment there was that people who were broken, people who right. were less than, you know, it's come, taste, see. This is here for each of us. You know, again, no stepchildren. Right. That's right. That's it's right. It's just amazing. So I think in his his home that day, um, that it really wasn't a lot different. You know, than than this. And sometimes we, maybe we make it so many other things, and we forget what it actually was. Because in 1968. Um, inviting anyone to communion without requirement was radical. There were not other churches doing that at the time. There are now, but there, there were not then. And so it feels like to me, you know, that there was this, this mm. moment where um, Troy just had a moment of grace. Maybe he heard God again. Um, I don't know. But it wasn't unlike Jesus in the, in the upper room with his disciples, where um, it was just a small space. It was a small place. And the real party had already happened, the Passover feast. And with what was just left on the, on the table, Jesus did something new with this meal. Because what Jesus said was, this is a new covenant that, that this is a covenant of love and grace, mm -hmm. not of the law, not of requirement. And, and then on that day with Troy in 1968, it was a new twist on that, which is just a reminder that this is love and grace for all of us, for every one of us. And so come on to this table. I mean, that was really uh, exactly what happened. And... I really appreciate every now and then taking something as simple as a coffee table and reminding us that in the simplicity of this meal, there is an amazing new message for us about the power, the miracle of love and grace. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and 
broke it. And he reminded us, Troy reminded people that day, and Liz and I remind you today, that we should remember that the whole point was love and grace. And he also took the cup and he blessed it. And he asked them to pass it around to one another and to drink of the cup so they could remember that sometimes you pour your whole self into something. Sometimes you give up everything you have so that love and grace create a miracle that we had not yet imagined. And so every time we come and we eat bread and we drink from the cup together, we are reminded, I hope, Mm -hmm. that this is a table for anybody. And it's a table where love and grace is the most important thing. Please pray with me. Holy One, we thank you again on this day, as people have done through the centuries, for this gift. We thank you for the ways that these gifts come into our being. We thank you for the ways that we receive them. And we thank you, God, that it can mean so many different things to so many of us and yet you still bless us in the taking of this meal. And so, pour out into these elements, into this bread and into this cup, the miracle that is your grace and your love, so that we might receive it each in our own way and in all the ways that we need. And may it be so in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. I invite you to come just as you are, because in every metropolitan community church throughout the world, we practice an open communion. And that is, that is one part of the miracle. Part of the miracle is that love that each of us can come just as we are, believing as we do. There are no requirements other than to come seeking a closer walk with God, because as we heard earlier, surely the presence of our God in this place. Come as you are, believing as you do. Indeed. And so in a few minutes, the ushers will uh, come to your rows and let you know when to come up front if you'd like to come and receive communion today. There will be uh, uh, partners down at the front who will be here to serve you communion. And so as you come, they will uh, dip the wafer in the juice and put it into your mouth. If you would prefer to dip it yourself, if you'll just come with your hands held out this way, we'll be happy to give you the wafer, and you can dip it yourself and serve yourself. There will also be prayer partners here at the front if you'd like a a brief prayer of blessing, and so please make sure that you do that if you'd like. We'll have a person over by the prayer wall who will um, be there for extended prayer needs if you have those. Uh, We will also have over here to my right and your left a station where we have gluten-free wafers, so for those of you who need that. I don't think Troy had that that day, but, um, uh, you know, we evolve uh, as things come to our awareness. And so, um, most important, there are no requirements here. So come as you are, believing as you do.